Oof. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Is <laughs> Mark on? <laughs> <laughs> it's opposite day, yeah? Yeah. Oh. Gather round. I've actually shattered on my going. Same here. It's so big over there. I'm on school holidays as well. What am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? I should have paid for it something. Here come the day. Yeah, you've been saying that for ever since we started this part. It does look like by me. It sort of reminds me a bit of like the Olympics. It's yeah, like but cool. better. But way better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the only thing that's on top of it is the World Cup. Olympics yeah. can get in the bin. We're, what, we're going to play it at Suncourt? We should just do a gather round every round. Yeah. Just give it to different states. <laughs> yeah. Imagine Alice Springs gather round. <laughs> yeah. The World Cup was unbelievable. Just the... World Cup in Russia as well. Here come the day. Yeah. Welcome, 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 welcome. Fade that one out, D-Man. Good stuff. Nice welcome. fade. Yeah. Well, we know what podcast it is. It is The Debrief. I am your host, Adrian Horton, and it's an absolute pleasure to have back in the studio, mm. Matt Adzi mm. Adams. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, fellas. Pumped to be back. It's good to have you back. Bit of chat in the WhatsApp recently. Just, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy I'm back this week as well after a big win. So mm. It's great timing. My confidence is raging again. Um, <laughs> we we're just talking about we're, we're, forward we're just, to predictions already. We're a tough team. No, I'm not. I'm. I'm going to change my tone this year. And I'm, oh, I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually not going to do uh, the big, the big <laughs> victories. Can we ask why? Well, I thought it was like a 2021 thing where it worked, whereas last year <laughs> maybe it didn't. Well, the last two years really, oh. when we went out straight sets, uh, double straights. So yeah, we'll see straight how we go. I don't cool. know. <laughs> It, let's see how confident you and Mark get me by the end. Mm. And it, yeah, may, maybe. A I'll read teams out and we'll just go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Marker. Yes. What a win. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, everything that has been said already, I, I, mean, I don't need to go into it, but I will. Um, the, <laughs> you know, just, I was just so happy for Viney and I, I felt like uh, moments when we just had to execute, we just did it. And like there was almost like... I mean, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but there was like this kind of just belief and this kind of um, willingness just to get over the line for Jack. I just, that was the narrative I was playing throughout my head, like whether it was him running in and streaming in and kicking that goal and, or if it was, we just mentioned off air when, when Gorn got that free kick for the ruck and just before three quarter time, I was just like, no part of me thought that he was going to miss that. It was just like, we're winning this game yeah. and, um, and we're, we're paying homage to, you know, after Jones and Gorn, he's right up there in terms of the most like popular and like most important players that we've had at this club um, since the turn of the century. Heart and soul. And yeah, I was just like so happy for him and so happy that we got over the line against a team. Like it was a, it was a crazy game. Like it was yeah. finals. Like it was the ball was pinging around. Um, yeah, it was it was an amazing win. Do you know what I'm getting? A lot of confidence out of listening to you at the moment, just compared to to last year. Touch his leg. It's, it's already yeah. I'm getting closer and closer. I'm getting closer and closer to Marker. Um, no, no, just because I, I feel like last year. I know we had a run late in the year, but we were all pretty like just saying things like that about Gorn. Like you, you were confident he was going to kick it, even when we were down by. I think it was almost four goals in the first quarter. I was the same. Like I was like, oh, I still think we're going to come back here. Mm. I don't really think. Last year or the last couple of years, I sort of had that that same feeling. Like I feel like we've got a different hardness to us this year. I, yeah, I definitely had a belief coming into the finals last year, but that was like, I mean, the wins. I'm trying to think of an analogy here. I'm just going to say that that all went away when um, Petty and Melksham went down for me. Mm, like mm. it was that was like, oh, you're kidding me. Yeah. Like okay, we it was big. And, and and it's crazy that we got within basically a kick from Collingwood, really, in that in that qualifying final. Like we were so close to it, and then coming to get up against Carlton, I was kind of like, well, we lost against Collingwood. Like the year's done. Like we ended up, we would have had to have gone to Brisbane anyway, and there was no chance we we're ever going to beat them. But the craziest thing for me this year are, are two players who 
we all kind of thought were over the hill and, and that we basically have said on this podcast and yeah. relentlessly in the thread have said, you know, never again, right? Mm. And look, if you look at the body of work over the last year and a half to two years, we're not we're not fools for saying that. Uh, and you know the two people that I'm going to bring up because they're at stages in their career where, you know, you, the body is just like so fragile in terms of like, maturity and and whatnot but brown and and t-mac like they've they've added in elements of structure and confidence that you know we don't have to rely on a 21 year old rude to kind of step up Mm. right we don't have to rely on lever to do everything if may's not going to play like it's crazy that these two players have just come in and they're just playing like a professional role and they're doing their job and i'm just so happy Never yeah. again in the thread is probably scratching the surface yeah. of what we've actually said. But we were, we were, we were, <laughs> but we were also <laughs> echoing the thoughts and minds of all demon fans. No, no, you're I right. I mean, it's not just them either. There's he- heaps of players that cop it, and we we <laughs> we do it because we believe that also sometimes it makes makes them better. We're sort of jinxing it a little bit. But we also True. have never doubted the ability of those players. It's the body. Mm. And, and you know, we were getting told that Brown was getting, like, fluid taken out of his knees. And that probably still could very well be happening. But mm. it's 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 never been a thing of he's not good enough. It's that, oh, he, like, literally He just looks old run. and slow. Yeah. 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 I, don't, I don't want to quash it. It's still early. For sure. It's a long season. But so, just the yeah. fact that that stock is there as an option. And they're not going to play the whole year. They're not going to play every game. Yeah. Brown probably won't play this, you know. But we're looking yeah. kind of stacked now. Like when you have those older players playing well, like mm. a Brown and a T-Mac, like you look at our back line and May doesn't play against Port. And then like Marty Hoare is a great inclusion. I know he's just um, done his thumb. But Fractured his thumb. Like yeah. we look kind of stacked in those areas now where it used to be like if someone goes down, we, like, we're off. Gonna, how yeah, how are we going to do this? Whereas, and it's crazy to think we lost Brayshaw coming into this yeah. season. Yeah, and now we've got like Petty who, yeah. you know, ideally probably they want him playing forward, but if we need to, we'll play him back. Um, and then T-Mac, like awesome from Goody, just being like, nah, he's a, he was a gun defender. Yeah. And then he's just gone straight back into that role. Like he's, he never left it sort of thing. I'm excited to see... Turner be fit again. Like he's got... Close. He's, he's a week away, yeah. right? Um, you know, with more, sorry, more, with Hoare Demore. Um, being out, unfortunate for him, he kind of seemed like he was settling in nicely, but like nature of the beast, how quickly things can change. But, you know, as you just said, we bat deep, especially, mm. we Bowie's, always kind Bowie's of- Bowie's out as well. Like, yeah, Bowie's we'll still out. Moment. God, it's Lockie such Hunter's hard, out. Yeah, well, <laughs> speaking of the WhatsApp. <laughs> 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 anyway, that leads into Caleb Windsor. Uh, what a first goal that was. That oh. was an incredible goal. Uh, got nominated as well. Nominated for goal of the year for yeah. his first goal. And also just a, not only how good the, the goal was, the, the time that he did it. It oh. was a crucial goal. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's got bravery beyond his years. He just looks like he's been playing at the level... For ages. Just, just the way he celebrated time. as well. Like yeah. I'm not sure if you watched Geelong v Hawthorne. With but, the wizard, yeah. Don't ever call wizard him that. And like, look, look. Kinnivid he could very sorry. well be called the wizard at some point, and I will call him the wizard and, and say, "Yeah, you're a wizard." But at the moment, his name is Nick Watson. Yeah. But like, they got within, I don't know, five goals, and he celebrated like they'd won the match. And I was like, I "Saw that." Uh, listen, mate, just chill. And yep. then you look at Caleb, like clutch goal. You know what I mean? Unbelievable finish, and he's just like, "Yeah." Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's go let's back to going. the center. Go. There's still let's a go. job to do. Yeah, like you're right. It. He looks like a bit old school as well. Like, he's got the high shorts, the black, black boots. boots. Mm. He's just means work. Mm. He was one that he's we, just got we the tipped most really hard on before we played a game as well. <laughs> yeah, I think we reverse mozzed him really well. Yeah. yeah. So we need to work yeah. out someone who maybe isn't in the best form at the moment, Lucky well, or just someone who hasn't really. Well, played. someone who, yeah, who hasn't played and so just Fullerton, bag them as much as possible. Yeah. Fullerton. Fullerton's going to yeah. be the worst player of all time. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then who knows what's going to happen in a few weeks. Be a yeah, could be his mid-season drop-in or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, the record at Adelaide Oval, I wanted to bring this up. Against Port how Adelaide. Many, can, we, can we Oh, guess? Yeah. yeah. How many have yeah. we played there? Go like for it. 12? We've played... I think that 20, my math is really good here. We've played 
15. 15. That's way off. Uh, um, but I'll do the split. So it's eight games against Port. So what's the record against Port? Four and four. Four and four. You've nailed it. Well done. And then what's the record against the Crows? Seven games. Uh, four and three. It's five uh, and two. Oh, nice. To the Demons. Okay. And we lost one by a point, remember? Yeah. That was yeah. when we got the 10 in a row. 11 or was it 11 or right. Yeah, maybe 11. Jeez, that was, that was a, a deliberate, which wasn't deliberate. Was that it? Yes. That was the one. Yeah. yeah. So, an incredible record over there. We've won the most games of any interstate side playing at Adelaide Oval against those clubs. Uh, it's awesome. We love it. It's the wide expanses. It's G-like. I think what ha- like, It's cool. Coming into, the, this, coming into last week and obviously this week, uh, there was a bit of... Oh God, they're making us play there twice in a row, like in whoa. five days. But it kind of it kind of seems like the club has really like got around it, and he's just like committed, like brought family over, and they're like, you know, this, we're going to make something out of this. And now I'm just like so confident that that would just it's like they're in the bubble again. Yeah, and, and, the, and the fact that the they're hub. like, mm. let's just play here again. The like, cloud. The, yeah. They're Adelaide even in the cloud. Gather around. Just stay there. Gather around in the cloud. One thing on Adelaide Oval... Nibbler's doing promos for the club. Oh, we'll talk yeah. about... What <laughs> the fuck? I saw that today. Nibbler has <laughs> gone from zero to 100. Seriously, I saw that. He's walking out with the, the CEO now. <laughs> like, honestly, this guy, uh, he couldn't have turned it around more. Yeah. He's been huge. He was best on ground for me. He was psychotic. Yeah. He, Absolutely. He, he was be. best he was on ground. Psychotic. He was the best player on the ground. Gone... Easily. No, Gorn, yeah, but the thing about Gorn's game, going back watching replay with old man, was like, <clears> what do we do? It's Sunday. We've just woken up. They stayed over. It's great to have them down for Easter. Old man's like, replay. Surely. Turned it on. <laughs> sat there. I think Fee was like, are we going to get out of the house soon? And then like yeah, all the yeah, Hortons yeah, are just yeah, sitting on hours. the couch being like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Two and a half hours later, we finally got out of the house. Watching the replay, Gorn was good, but Gorn grew into it and had a massive last quarter. Yeah. Nibbler was an ever-present from the first whistle. Yeah. yeah. And his tackles, one thing that didn't get spoken about enough when I was talking to Benny Lee in the review, his fucking tackles stick so hard. Maybe because we, we, kind of, we expect that from him now because that's all, obviously what he's always brought. Mm. Other things that he's brought to the, you know, is, you know, turn it over. <laughs> <laughs> but his confidence is right. Yeah, sure. no, it's like he's just mm. finished. Like, I feel like last year was just, he, he's, which is such a frustrating thing because he could be this He thing, was decent right? last year, though. Yeah, yeah, still, but he wasn't finishing. <clears throat> he finished he was sixth. Right. Sixth? Listen to sixth. me. Sixth. He I was, can never say sixth. He was okay. He but sixth in the BNF. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about like finishing his work. Yeah, like he does this. He does a mountain of work that, like, more than anyone else in terms of gut running, pressure, tackling. I think it's just like which is like invaluable stuff, right? True. But if he's doing what he's doing on the weekend as well, and I'm not expecting him to kick two or three every week, but one, you know what I mean? I feel like last year there was he just always missed those snaps or like those set shots, mm. and if he's finishing, then like, phew. Yeah, so it's, it's he was ma- he was massive. I and just love to whip just, on him. I'm so sticking yeah, yeah, on, forever on the greatest player of this year, Nibbler. Um, yeah, I saw a video. I can't remember who did it, but his running patterns as well. So he does like yes. all of this first crack, this running like up the ground, which mm-hmm. then frees the space for Petraka to go forward. Forward. <clears throat> so even though he's like Nibbler's love probably it. playing one of the hardest positions as well. Opens it up for him, and then there was all these different clips of basically pulling his opponent out, and then there's all this space in sort of around centre half forward, and tracks just streaming through. Yeah, so he's pretty yeah. selfless in that way. As well. and definition of unsung, but the fact that he played a game like that on the weekend, people have to take notice, right? Yeah, but the the thing, thank you so much for bringing that up, Adzi, because again, another thing that slipped my mind. I told him to say that, by the way. Yeah, well, well done. <laughs> uh, as he has a vape in the studio. Thanks, Derek. <laughs> he just rolls his eyes. God, you're good, Derek. Derek was playing uh, Fortnite before. Yeah. yeah, saw that. You're winning? No, nah, not really. No, he looked. Uh, he was rolling down a mountain last time I walked past. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> um, with with that that footage as well. I think it was Lee Montagna spoke about. When Nibbler does all that dirty work in the defensive half, takes his opponent out, Track gets that space. It was something absurd. Like Track has a hundred disposals more in the front half than any other mid in the game. 
So this has been happening for a while, but because we know Sweet F all about the game, we just don't realise that that's probably been his role, Nibbler, for the past three or four years. Mm. Yeah. So the idea that Track gets free licence in the right moment you got to pick and choose to like go up the ground and deliver the ball inside 50 and get involved in scoring chains because Nibbler's sacrificing himself the other way is yeah. so sick. And look, the, and so sick. another player that I'm like that comes to mind when you th- when you look um, just at the game itself and obviously you notice players more so than others. Langdon's probably another one and like definitely would be whereby yeah, he's not having the same kind of impact as he was probably 18 months ago or what, however long he was when he was like the best winger in the comp or something. Mm. But just his running patterns and the effort and the work that he puts in enables other players to do what they do. And like I will always recognize that. And I feel like I've always recognized that with Nibbler. <laughs> no. What no, I will say what yes. I will for his running. His running has always been at... Like Hallmark, uh, yeah, yeah, but, and but that, that was about it, though. Yeah, really. no, yeah, for me as well. It was just like, <laughs> that was yeah, so good. At that was about over. it. Yeah, so sick at like miss handballing. But with with Langdon, it's like look out when he starts to kind of click it a bit more as well. Which I feel like it's he's I definitely like he last is. weekend he was, and even the weekend prior he was a lot better. Do you know what he's really good at? And I've knocked him for this, and a few people have. His physicality. There were times where he was just straight lining the ball, bodying a could few have blokes. spoiled. Hmm. But there was a spoil. No, that I don't could've... do that. Caleb does don't that do too. That. No, no, no. I'm going to, you know, this is critical podcast here. I am it sipping is. on my Melbourne bitter, and, you know, I would have done the spoil. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you know the spoil I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. He's but been, he's he's, been better, though. He has been better. He's been better. He's par. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lucky Hunter. Um, Derek, can you bring up a clip for us? We've got a little surprise here. This is from uh, Jeff fan, Farmer. A fan favorite <laughs> oh. of the pod. Oh, um, another high flyer. Just, just one moment. This is from Robbo's Rundown, of course, which is on Debrief Premium at the moment. Mm. Um, he's down in Tassie when he was doing this. and uh, he's, he was, a, he's a Tassie man. He is. He's from Penguin. And he was at a. <laughs> yeah, I know. What a place. And he is was. Is that south or. I don't know. That? You'd I think so. Know. We should look it up. Yeah, sounds cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he was at a footy oval when he was doing this, which was very apt. And uh, Just walking around the oval? Yeah, just walking around the oval, just doing laps, having a chat to me for half an hour, uh, the poor bastard. And this is what he had to say about the hostility of the Adelaide crowd. Mm. We saw like Bailey Critch's goal from the boundary line. You know, he's copped it a fair bit too lately. His kicking for goal has been a little bit down. And okay, you know, he's worked through it. He won it in front of that Port Adelaide parochial crowd. I can tell you from past experiences, my mum and dad had a fight over there one day. So the whole group were just getting stuck in me. Just no other reason that they just decided today was Russell Robertson's day to cop it. And poor old mum was there and she copped an earful. And they didn't care either. They kept going when she told them that that's my son you're talking about. <laughs> Good on you, mum. <laughs> anyway, they are pretty tough, uh, the Port Adelaide supporters. I go so far as to say they're worse than Collingwood supporters. Yeah. Uh, and I'd love yeah. seeing Bailey Fitch turn around and absolutely give them to him there. That was fantastic to see. Love that from Robbo. And yeah. I loved it as well because the Channel 7 camera crew were doing a great job of picking out the scummiest people you've ever seen in your life in the crowd, giving our players as much stick as they could. And Melbourne answered. And the reason why I wanted to bring that up as well is I think there's an overconfidence about tomorrow night's game. Adelaide haven't won a game. And Marker made a really good point in our thread saying, geez, it'd be nice if they could pinch one against Frio. Suddenly they've got the monkey off the back. They're one and two, not zero and three like they are now heading into this game. They'll be so desperate to win. Home deck, opening gather round, backs against the wall. We've got a few players that are sore. Uh, Ben Brown might not get up. Uh, Stephen May, there's a watch on him. We'll see what happens when the teams come out shortly. Jack Viney, sick, didn't train today. Uh, Cade Chandler probably isn't going to play either. So there's a lot of people expecting us to just get the job done. For all the reasons I just spoke about, I think we just need to apply the lid a little bit and show Adelaide a little bit of respect. Yeah, for sure. Uh, 
<laughs> Will we get it done though? <laughs> yeah. You know, it'll be like 80 or 100. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I always I always look at footy as a, an emotional kind of game more than anything and a feel. Mm. And yeah, there's a reason I said that. And Marbo. They, they'll be looking at this game as if it's like a final for them. Like they... Ha- it pretty you, much you is. can't start zero and what four. four. If you yeah. start zero and four, you're not making finals. Unless you're Sydney not in this, not in or this Geelong country. or Hawthorne back in the yeah, day. but they're not because yeah. and they've already. How many have they played at home? Will this be the second? Yeah, well, they played Geelong at home. Yeah, and then they're away to the Gold Coast and they're away to Ferris. So this will be their second at home. Yeah, yeah. You, you just you just can't start the season zero and, four. and they'll be coming hard. Yeah, and. But I, I just feel as though if we play the way that we have been playing, uh, they would have to they would have to elevate an extra like fifty percent to what their output <laughs> is at the moment to match what ours is. Um, I just yeah, I just I, I look at their midfield. I'm just like I can't see them matching what we offer. Yeah, their dream. But I think. <laughs> um, no, no, no. I, I honestly. And then it's scary that Tex <laughs> hasn't turned it on yet. The fog really hasn't. Rochelle hasn't. They're like, a good. They're they're actually, they have great, they have some really really good players, and I, I do. I don't know uh, the Port game, but me and Sam, we were, I don't know, weirdly confident that we were gonna we were gonna beat Port. Mm. I'm almost not as confident this week, just because of it's like opening gather round. They this is a must win, as you said, Nazi spot on. It, it will be like this is basically a final for them in a way. They're in front of. Uh, you know, basically all of the football supporters in Australia opening this huge round in their home state in front of their families and so on. I just think it's going to be definitely a tough start and we need to make sure they don't jump us. Like We can't let them do what Port did against us last week. Like Gold Coast against them were, were decent and Geelong were really impressive against them. Yeah. But Frio, that was like, I don't know, that was one of the hardest watches that I've had this year. <clears throat> Freo yeah. weren't particularly good at Horrible. all. It was Horrible. just, you know, Sarong was like a freak. Pierce dominated. Pierce was the best player in the field. For me. But apart from that, it was it was a bit whatever. But the skills from Adelaide have just been so poor. Like just, yeah. just there's no linkage. There's no um, cohesiveness. It's just, it's really hard to watch. And I bet you they'll just turn. They'll it just. On. They will. We'll cop it. Yeah. yeah. They were really. But sloppy. bring it on as well, because we played in a in a finals like game. Yeah. Just gone. Like bring it on. That, they're saying that's potentially game of the year so far against Port. It was a was a great game. Like well, it would have been so good as a neutral. Oh yeah. Well, what I'm trying to think, what else would come close? I actually like the game on before it, the the Essendon game. Uh, was, yeah, but like in no, terms it wasn't of as like skillful skill in intensity. Like, yeah, uh, uh, intense, but. Yeah, I don't know. I, I do worry that they're going to come out and this is going to be their game where they just, they're like, all right, we're flicking it. They're seeing red. Yeah. But then, as you said, bring it on. Like, I feel like, as we are talking about at the start of the pod, we just have this hardness and belief to us at the moment. And mm-hmm. um, like, we just watched that clip of Fritter as well, like giving it to the crowd and, you know, Ben Brown, I think he's too nice to do that, but like he was copying it as well. Like we're kicking important goals and we're mm-hmm. doing things at the right time and, Probably a couple of years ago, if we go down by four goals, we're, you know, we'd roll over at some stages of those last couple of years. So I think we're going to be in there for the fight, but I think it will be a tough wrestle, especially at the start. Definitely. Yeah. Adelaide in that game against Fremantle, one thing that stuck out to me was there was a point during the game, which is relatively deep into the game. I feel like it was halfway through the third quarter. Anyway, the stat was. 14 forward half intercepts to one. So uh, the Crows just continuously butchered the ball when they were coming out of their back half. How many kicks marker did they just, they bit off more than they could chew and they were just going into the corridor and just missing targets inexplicably. And it happens so, so, so many times. It's not like it's at the dome or like, or skilled, still call it skilled. Mm. There's so much space at Optus Oval, but they just could not hit those Could targets. not hit targets. And and the same, the thing is, there's going to be so much space um, because it's Adelaide Oval. If they want to continue to play that style where they look for that kick into the corridor to open it up, we fucking love that. We mm. feed off that because we just go, no worries, you can have the ball. We'll just get all our men behind the ball. And then as soon as we win it back, then we'll chain out through a little bit of handball and hit you hit you the other way. So I'd be really surprised if we if they don't change their style. 
Like, I think we might actually see them try to possess the ball a little bit more. Because I don't reckon Matthew Nix has enough confidence in his team to not um, turn it over at the moment if they want to play an aggressive, let's kick it into the corridor and try and take as many risks as they did against Freo. Because it was ridiculous. But it kind of seems like the way that... The way that I remember Adelaide playing so well last year was playing with freedom and and like mm. this this flow to them and just like relentless and getting it down to the smalls of like Rochelle and Rankin and then you've got obviously the bigs of the Fog and and Tex mm. and Phil thought when he's playing who actually I don't mind and he's out he, isn't he yeah. But will he come in or is he No, still... he's out for the year. I'm pretty sure he did, really? did his knee, if my memory is But I think you're right, though. Like, Tex te- mm. really? and Fogarty haven't really... Well, Miller, had, Miller is out. It's, they haven't really done much this year. No. So far. Like, I know it's early days, but I think, to your point, Three last months. year, Tex was Tex was on fire, remember? Yeah, especially for the first... Australian. Uh, yeah. Especially that first half of the year. He hasn't shown that so far. So, no. hopefully, he doesn't just pull it out. This week, because he, but he usually he likes us. Mm. He, he does. Usually plays he kicks well some against outrageous goals against us. That that game that we mentioned, I don't know if it was the one point loss. The one point loss. Mm. He, you know, kicked that winner, and he was huge against us. But he usually does like us. But they'll bring heat. Yeah, they have. But to. Will we bring May? May's playing. Don't know. We'll find out. In I reckon he will. Seventeen minutes. Because yeah. we sort he's of pretty need good him. Because well. I reckon <laughs> May would. Yeah, he's pretty good. Or I reckon May out. would probably take like a a Fogarty even play a bit deeper, and then we need to put like a T Mac T Mac on Tex and run with him, and then have Lever still floating. Yeah, through. I'm so just like comfortable with T Mac on a Tex. Yeah, so it's the same as Charlie Dixon, right? I mean, mm. Tex is obviously a better player, but in terms of size and Build and Dixon had it, but also game. running capacity. T Mac's got him on that. T Mac's a great runner. He is. Do we we love T Mac, don't we? T Mac is awesome. Never doubted him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Pretty sure it's Adrian who. <laughs> I think we all. I think we've, no, we've all doubted game. him at some yeah, point. Yeah, um, I, think think he's he's <laughs> I just wanted to bring up a player that I said I wasn't worried about him a few days ago, but now I'm starting to worry about him a little bit. Can I guess who it is? Yes, you can. Uh, Just ask that question a bit too early. Um, <laughs> maybe Come a on. forward. Yes. Yeah. Is yep. it not Cozzy? No. Okay. Good. It's right, never Cozzy. I'm never worried about Cozzy. Not K. Brew. Well, is that fair? No. No. It's structurally I think good though. Yeah. And I think there's no one else. I think we've mentioned this before. Is that like who else can play that second ruck role? But he also Fullerton. takes. Yeah, but what can Fuller? I don't know what Fuller can do up forward. We don't. Well, F- Fuller's his massive pile still. So. Yeah. yeah, he's like. But the I worst feel like if Rue. I, I know Rue hasn't like <laughs> smashed it, but if he doesn't play even that role last week. But how close it, was it, he to having a seriously yeah, good game with those? Like, but it opens up. Hands, like, it opens up a baby. Like, it opens up Fritch because. Yeah. He it's similar, like actually quite similar to what we we're talking about with with Petraka and, and Nibbler. Yep. It's like he yep. almost sacrifices a little bit, creates a contest, and then fritches out the back and taking yeah, hands. And, and, and for me, off. it's not like he's not contesting, or it's not like he's presenting. Like he still has presence, and I reckon even in the second half alone, there were four or five moments yeah. where I was like, "Whoa, yeah. Rue almost." He's close like to a, putting it all together. Yeah, so if no, he no. takes. Three of those marks, they they mean so much. I think, those big marks down the line, yeah. like, and we, it's so good. Forget. If we don't have, obviously, Gorn's always going to be there and do that. But if someone else is doing and taking those marks, it's like they're the most invaluable marks. Like, there's so much pressure on the ball. We finally get out of defence. You kick it down the down the line or in the middle, and some big fella takes a mark, a contested mark. They're just they're the best marks. They're the best. You just Breathe a sigh of relief. And he, he got close like four or five times. I, I feel like we always give him a pass. Because be, of his age. Because of his, his age. Yeah. He's still maturing. And do you know but what? It's his size as well uh, and uh, his position. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it's to do with the fact that we've got a guy that clearly has everything in his locker and he's proven he can take a big grab and he's strong and he's a bit of a dead-eyed dick when he gets in front of goal. The one thing you can categorically single out and just put a line through it, is he will become a player. Mm. It's different to when we were putting games. I hate to say the name. I'm Sam. 
It's different to when we're putting games into Sam. Yeah. Where you said to yourself, oh, I don't know. I just don't know. Whereas I think inherently you look at Rue and you're like, he'll he'll be a serious player for us one day. So I'm happy for us to continue to persist with him every single week. My only watch on him though is maybe he's not affecting the contest as much as I would like personally. Yeah. That's all. And look, I would love him to take another three more or four contested marks and kick another two goals. But he will, so. Yeah. He's, as yeah. you said, like he's young. And yeah. He's, but yeah. like the, the, the flip side of that is we have Ben Brown playing again at the moment and like he's been able to come in and, and do that. If it, was just, if it was just one or the other, I'm not sure if, if either of them would have the same kind of impact or effect. Like I'm not sure if, if there was no Rue, if there would be so much focus on Brown, would he be able to do... No. What he's been able to do. He I would be. say no. That's why yeah. for our structure, he's just needed. Yeah. Petty forward, so much better for me. I loved how Goody took the risk at halftime and said, you know what? I reckon Jake Lever and the boys will get it done. It was a massive risk mm. to put him in the forward half. And he did it and it worked. And we looked so much better with Petty up forward. I know structurally it just felt different. It felt better. Like you talk about like just vibe without getting tactical, like we just looked better. So I'm with Adzi, like my big hope is we don't have to be in a position where we put Petty back. I just want to see him continue as a forward. And I love his niggle and his mongrel. Like mm. he's a bit of a prick. Yeah. And he's a big boy and you see him laughing with the poor players when he was getting into a bit of a fracas with them. He doesn't give a fuck about a bit of physical attention. Mm. Like he loves it. So I want him forward. I kind of want him forward permanently and I don't want the back situation it, unless we're desperate. It probably sure. just depends on if May's in or not. Mm. And in terms of our end True. game, if we're looking at like an ideal situation at an ideal time of the year, you, you need him forward and we, we want him to be forward because we haven't had those options up forward to kind of cause a dent in finals, clearly. Mm. We were pumping him up when he went back second half against Hawthorne, but we lost May and Lever, and he was awesome. He's good but again, everywhere. it was Hawthorne. Yeah. He's good. He's That's the best thing about it. Mm. He's good. Like, he's just a good player. He'll, he'll play well forward or back. Mm. Be good if we rattled them and put Petty back and put T-Mac forward just for all the time. <laughs> Great no, thanks. <laughs> Don't you remember that Carlton final? Well, well look T-Mac at Ben forward. Brown. He might gel. Mm. Bring it back to the 2021. Bay Bay, Brown. T-Mac goes which, forward, kicks five. why I'm not a coach. Yeah. T-Mac goes forward, kicks five all of a sudden. Yeah, nah. There's um, no way. Oh, by the way, sorry, just quickly. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking to myself before. Yeah. Tell you who's going to have a blinder. Here we go. Cozzy Pickett. Because he's back yeah. home, he'll have 40 tickets to family members, I reckon. Nugget and there, he, though. Nugget's he, not there with his little cousin. No, so Nugget's met his little cousin. I uh, can't remember his name. Still on the taxis with him, though, which is a little bit... Is that a bit weird? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, obviously, talking Ds. Um, and, yeah, I reckon he'll uh, he'll have a blinder. I'm, I'm feeling like tongue out, celebrations, boundary goals, first, second quarter, really setting the tone. You're feeling four, five? I'm feeling five. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I reckon he'll, he'll turn it on. I feel like because he loves, loves these sort of games in yep. front of big, like spotlight, it'll be good. 50K in there. Yeah, yeah it'll so be good. good. It's crazy. Um, Before we have a little breather and then come back and do the team news, I How went far and did. away we from teams? Yeah, we're about 10 minutes off. We'll go okay. have a little breather. I did um, a little bit of research and I figured out mm. that there are. There's 15, technically, 15 players that have played for both Melbourne and Adelaide. And I want you two boys, combined effort, to figure them all out. Chaney. Yeah, Chaney's one. <laughs> all right. <laughs> How long do you have? That's one for you. Um, come on. Well, come on. I'll give you one, Jake Lever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got that. I'm trying to think of more niche ones. Yeah. yeah. Well, don't go niche. Just think of the obvious no, ones. No, no, niche is fun. I was pretty happy with There's Jamie. a lot of niche ones you won't get. They're um, quite strange. Come on. Surely. If I just I'm, put you on the spot too yeah, much. Yeah, I'm rattling. Yeah, that was, How much that pressure? I just said I'm rattling as well. There's I'm, so many players Yeah, because yeah. you're looking at the list. Yeah. Like, come on. Uh, I would have at least got... Is there someone that plays for five, Melbourne five. at the moment besides Lever? Well, McAdam is technically McAdam, the 15th. Fuck. But oh, yeah. he's the 15th, but he hasn't played he for hasn't, Yeah, he's still he piled at the moment. So. Yeah, he's a big pile. <laughs> he's going to be so good. Yeah, no, nah, I'm actually excited about him. I'm yeah. pumped for Ten McAdam. Week Ami. 
Cadam, um, <laughs> um, <Cadem>. Lever, <laughs> got Chaney. Surely, uh, did we say Chaney? All right, I'll give you some clues. 2004 midfielder, Gun. Oh, Bernie. Oh, well, oh Bernie's, Bernie's one of Bernie's one. Yeah. yeah, Bernie's one. Well done. You've got a lot to go. Yeah, it's 13 apparently. 2004. Midfield, gun. Yes. Oh, Scott. Didn't Scott Thompson play? Yes, yeah, Scott yeah. Thompson. Yes. I'm so off here. Um, Do you want me to just run through them? Give, give, us, like, give, us, give us, us a forward. Maybe one or two f- more. Think about a mercurial forward. 2002, finals, kicking goals, tips. Crazy player. Great player, actually. One of the best <clears> forwards <throat> in the comp in the late 90s. Or not best forwards, best forward for his position. Highly touted. Came to the D's. Peter Vardy. Vardy. Oh. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Yeah. 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 We give it. That's, we give a, it. that's a get. Yeah. Well, when you're not competing. You're just, you're a combined. No, we're, we're competing. competing. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? There's uh, one that, there's one in here that you might be a little bit shocked they played for Adelaide and he played in the 2000 grand final. He was a mainstay down back for the D's. He was uh, a fullback. Not yeah. Nico. No, the other one who played for us. In the late nineties, early two thousand, Jamie play. Shanahan. No, no he was at St Kilda. Not Carroll. No, Anthony Ingerson. Oh, Ingo. Yeah, so Ingo's another one. Okay. All right, we'll don't keep... remember that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then it gets a little bit tricky from here. Oh, well, it hasn't been tricky. That was pretty easy already. to start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we sailed through them. <laughs> so I'm going to rattle these. Come on, ones. this would be shocking. I'm going to rattle, rattle like, these ones off. Just rattle, this... Matt Collins. Never heard of yeah. him. Yeah. Here was another one. Uh, Aiden Riley. Remember him? Oh, yeah, he kind of looked like the, yeah, the other Rileys these. who played actually weirdly heaps of games for uh, Danny Hughes. Oh, Danny Hughes. Could take a hanger. Danny Hughes. There's a guy called John Mason. Oh, the Mace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is he a Ruckman? Yeah. Yeah, he was big. He yeah. played two games. He was so bad. Two games for the Crows and he doubled his tally and played four for the Ds. No. He's well, one of the worst ever. Well done, Mason. <clears throat> Shout out to me. So sorry, that was a bit rough. Yeah, yeah. He played AFL, but to be fair, he... <laughs> James Seller. Yes, yeah, yep. big Remember Seller him. door. Yep. And then this rattled me. I actually went, and I had no idea who these players were. Trent Ormond Allen was a guy that played eight games. Is that one name? Yeah, <laughs> was that three of them? Come on, Trent Ormond Allen. <laughs> <laughs> he played eight games for Melbourne during 1994 to 96. Now this is crazy. I delved a little bit deeper. He went to the Crows. He played in the semi-final and the prelim for the Crows because, of course, they won the in Granny. In 97. In 97. He misses the Granny because of Glandula. Oh. Surely yeah. you're playing. Yeah, you Is don't. that code for... Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Who knows? Um, but how <laughs> are you... <laughs> testing. <laughs> how are you missing the Granny for Glandula, Trent yeah. Ormond Allen? So that's disappointing. You simply don't tell anyone and you just play. Yeah. Uh, Nick Pesh or Peche, he played mm. uh, for the Crows in 94 to 96, 31 games. And then he goes to the D's, he plays four games in 97. <clears> and then his career ends. So that's another guy. And then the last guy is called Clay Simpson. And he played in 95, 96, 13 games for the D's, 24 for Adelaide, comes back to Victoria, plays 27 games for Richmond. Thank you, Clay Simpson. That's our list. Right on, Clay. And how many did you get? Three. I got one. I think we I think. got more than three. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah. I mean, the the names you're really not. Like... They were pretty tough. I mean, we should have got Lever. That was pretty pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lever McAdam. Maybe. For sure. The beautiful thing about Jake Lever is I often forget he played for Adelaide because he's such a Melbourne player. Yeah, <clears throat> has been for quite some time now. Yeah. Um, big shout out to Miso again. Yeah. Yeah, Miso, miss you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come back, brother. Huge. All right, we'll take a little breather. We'll have a few kettle chips, mm. a couple more Melbourne bitters, Sound and then bigger. we'll see if Stephen May's playing. W. Are we on? We are. Oh, rolling. yeah. Okay. Well, <clears throat> we are rolling. We are back. We are here. We are three and one. We are drinking Melbourne bitters. Mm. And we are bringing you the team news. And we've made one change. Stephen comes in. Marty goes out. God, you've got to be pretty happy with that. But you seemed a little bit suspect. Do you think some more changes will happen? Or? I think potentially more changes, but again, what would I know? Well, let's, let's go through the potential changes then. Okay. Say, say Chandler isn't going to get up for the game. If Chandler doesn't get is up... Is it a Spargo? 
Uh, he's injured. He's injured. It's a Bailey okay, so. Laurie. <laughs> okay, Bailey. So, L- so so these are our emergencies. Bailey Laurie. Not fallers. Josh Diesel Shacky. Oh, oh God, God no. And Adam Tomlinson. The Tomos are all right. Yeah. Shacky. <laughs> Shacky's. Why is he even? <sighs> okay. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey. Anyway, I think if Cade doesn't get up, maybe Laurie comes in. If, if Ben Brown, Brown doesn't, doesn't get, get up, up, I'm sorry, but we can't play Shacky. Well, because we want to win, right? What's wrong with Ben Brown? <laughs> <laughs> what choice do you have? What's wrong with? I ben would Brown? say bring in Tomlinson and play There's... anyone down in defence. Play May full forward. I don't care. I just can't have Diesel playing. True. Neither. There's just chatter, Adzi, that Ben Brown, K Chandler. Well, we saw with K Chandler. Like, he came off. It would have been bandaged a knock. up. It would have but, been a yeah, knock but maybe, and... like, because it's a five-day break, maybe they're just, the coaching staff, like, people are going to training and they're seeing them not train or whatever. Mm. Maybe they're, you know, they're conditioned. Maybe they're like, just take it easy this week and then get ready for the game. It was funny seeing Jack Viney didn't train. He's a little bit sick. He took training off. There's not one single skerrick in my body that is worried about him no. playing tomorrow and dominating. No. He, he will dominate. need to have his leg amputated and he would still find a way to play. Yeah. So he's fine. Uh, Jack Billings was really, really quiet on the weekend, just by the way, as I look through the team. I think, again, I don't want to knock blokes for this, but I will. And it's easy when you're sitting here drinking Melbourne bitter and talking about it. But I reckon he struggled with the intensity of that game and the heat of that game against Port. Because against Hawthorne and against the Bulldogs... He had the wide open expanses in a game that wasn't as rapid, wasn't as hectic. And I just think he struggled because of the intensity. If it's intense again tomorrow night and Adelaide really come with their pressure game, I want to see a bit more from that boy. Otherwise, you'd almost go, does Lockie Hunter get a look in next week for billing spot? Yeah, but I also, I don't know, maybe there's only so much we we know. Maybe it's like a, a thing of like he has to hold shape or... He he can't really go in as much during He's, a game like that. I think maybe yeah. True. I think we've we've kind of knocked Melbourne in the past for everyone going in and not having an option just on the outside. He's got his role. He's just got yeah. I don't know if that. I'm not. I'm not saying that's it. I'm saying let's let's not. Let's not just like jump to conclusions too quickly. And he's been but, good before, but like. I don't mind that call that he's on a little bit of a watch. But he's I I I've really liked his efforts this year. So Small but. watch. Small watch. Tiny watch. Go to Adelaide's changes. So Jordan Butts is in, Patrick Parnell is in, Braden Cook, <laughs> Sam Berry, uh Luke Nancurvis. Oh, Sam Berry, he'll probably do some tag and roll like your brother, you lose. Yeah. Uh James Ball Lace. Ball Lace? Oh, I don't know. This is <laughs> making me real. Yeah, yeah you're just making up names at the moment. Lockie Scholl, Lachlan Murphy's injured. Luke Pedler has been omitted, which is big, I reckon. Obviously, Miller. Miller out. Injured. injured as well, which is a huge loss for them. He's yeah. a bit of a quarterback. Yeah, he's a good player. Um, Blake Howes. Should we just talk about him for a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty good. <laughs> so Blake and Caleb... <laughs> Mark are, always loved him. <laughs> yeah, always backed him. So Blake and Caleb are awesome, particularly, well, both of them, actually. But Blake Howes, I, I just I just can't I believe know. how good he is. I feel like we just... Well, there was that there was that um, picture of like all our picks and most of them just seem to be these half-back kind of like players who... Just come in and it just mint. Should we get it up? So Judd McVee, pick eighteen in the rookie draft. Marty Hall, preseason supplemental signing. Blake Howes, pick thirty nine. Trent Rivers, pick thirty two. Harrison at pick thirty seven. Tom McDonald, pick fifty three. That was our back line mm. on the weekend, bar Jake Lever. Mm. Yeah. That's crazy. Jace. Yeah, well done. Never in doubt. And I can't believe we doubted him with Caleb. Yeah, we did. We we doubted him big time. Um, other parts of the ground, I mean, Max coming up against Riley O'Brien, uh, Riley O'Brien's always a good matchup. He's looked really slow this year though, Riley. Like he hasn't. Is he getting on? Yeah. Just... He just like hasn't played nowhere near to what he, you know, what his output usually is this year. I've, I've noticed that he hasn't really had the same kind of impact. Yeah. He's 28. 
He's still pretty young. Oh, I, that's, that's prime. I feel as he's starting to get a bit smug every time I read out a, an Adelaide Crows player, but that's okay. Uh, Isaac Rankin and Josh Rochelle can play footy. Can sing too. That yeah, was pretty I cool. Yeah. Nice voice. Did I, you like, I like that? I liked it. Yeah. 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 I thought he was pretty good. It's gutsy. Yeah, it was really gutsy. Yeah, good on him. Yeah. That was great. Uh, that's the only win he'll get this week. Uh, Jordan Dawson, obviously, gun. But I'm with Adzi. Like, I look at their midfield and I go, okay, Matt Crouch. Well, someone who hasn't, who hasn't like, performed to the, like, same level as what he has for, like, five years now is Blair. Like, he's he's been a freak. He hasn't, he just hasn't, like, been playing to that same level. And I'm not, like, saying that he's done in any way. Like, he could come out this weekend and get 44. Like, he's a freak. Yep. I love Laird. I've yep. always loved Laird. But if if he's not playing well, they're not winning, you know? Because then who does it fall on? Like, a Matt Crouch? Like, I'm sorry, but he's just... He's more of a polish. He's not going to be in and under and, like, beating Varney or Petrarca or, or Oliver. No. Or Sparrow. Um, God, we're good. Geez, that sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> and then who? And then obviously Dawson's a gun as well. But yeah, like they need Laird to be firing Big if time. they're a chance against us. And Tex, Ben Keys, thoughts, Keys, curious, concerns. Keys, Keys, he, he, he comes he's, in, he's he does his good. thing. Yeah, does yeah. his thing. Is he like a poor man's Jack Viney? No, I, I, he's a bit of a jack of all trades. Keys, he kind of floats around. He can bob up for a goal. Mm. He doesn't. In no no way does he offer the same as what Jack does. I don't mind Jake Saligo. I thought he was decent the other night. Okay. Did you make that name up again, or is that <laughs> where I think we get him? I just look at their defence and the way they were everywhere. Coming out of the yeah, gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Worrell, Jordan Butts, Brody Smith, Patrick Parnell, Mark Keane, and Max Michael Lanny. Oh, geez, wow, that sounds so bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, We've done oh, pods like this. Done, I know, I know. And that's I, what I'm just thinking. I'm like, I'm, nah, no, I'm we're going to lose. That. We're going to lose. <laughs> Weren't we doing it with Melican? And then he had an awesome game. We did it last year to Port. We were like, oh, how are these, you know, young little kids going to come up <laughs> against? And then, yeah, Butters had the best game of his life. Yeah. Let's uh, just bring uh, it back a little bit then. Port away trip was good. Uh, convinced you to stay. And then you only stayed at the pub for an extra two hours because Nuggets had to get home. Yeah. He was a little bit full. But yeah, um, I I feel like they're gonna come. Oh yeah. I feel like it's gonna be heated. But you go through the, the, the lists and the teams and it's I just feel like if we if we finish like we have been this year, like it it would it will take like a seven goal eighteen and you know, for them to finish better than us and the text to kick a four or something and the fog to bob up for his his three or something. Yep. To get them over the line, but yep. the way that we've been playing, the way that they've been playing, like I just, I just think it's just another professional grind. It, you know, I feel like they're going to come, but I'm expecting a 17 point win. 17 point win. Oh, we're going pretty close. Are we gonna? Am I gonna give my prediction or go a bog as well? Um, give us your bog. Hmm. <laughs> That's I mean, a long it's, pause yeah, for no, radio. It's so easy just to pick one of the big four. But it normally is. I know. They're so good. <laughs> um, so pick one of them. Petrarca will kick two and have 40. <laughs> Jesus. Nah, he'll have 25. Sorry. Okay. And But he'll kick two goals and you'll just go... Oh, Clary yeah. does love Adelaide Oval. He does. Yeah. He does. Had 37 and 30. But I'm, I'm interested about Barry. I feel like someone's going to come in and, and play on one of them. It's usually Oliver that they kind of like stick him on because you can't really. I mean, you can try and tag him, but it's also but they always takes, try and tag Oliver more than just takes a player off their list basically, and Oliver yeah. still gets like thirty touches. <laughs> Were you in the don't play Stephen May camp or no play him? Hmm. I was in the don't play him camp. Why? Just because I feel like we've got enough cover and we can do it. But then a whore was ruled out. But there's like, oh. you know try and stop him if he yeah if he's. I think Goody came out and said if he can play, it's it's more of a pain issue. He's like, the doctors have said, I mean, obviously if he gets like another chole sort of knee in the same area, it's not going to be good. But like he said, it's more of just the pain management. And yeah, I feel like I, he doesn't really care that much about pain. He's got a bit of the mind enough him. that they're not going to be playing him. And, and he less... said he wanted to play last week. <laughs> <laughs> I love the look of this. 
Rivers, May, McDonald, Howes, Lever, McVeigh. Oh, God. Yeah. Can I change my prediction? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then even front half, Nibbler. Yeah. Uh, Harrison Petty, Cozzy, Rue, oh, Ben okay. Brown, Fritter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I'll change it to 70. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll stick with 17. I think they're going to come and I think it will be highly contested. Opening, gather round. Um Gather around so mint, by the way. I love it. Yeah, it's yeah, good. I think it's a, such, yeah, such a great initiative to... Should have flown us over. We'll have to yeah. take uh, Derek's van. Next year, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, would you do that, Derek? Would you? Yeah, absolutely. He's just... He's nodding. Yeah, easy, yeah, apparently. Pay for the petrol too. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a rental car. Bring it back without petrol. Um, all right, I'll do my bog and prediction. I'm going to go for Nibbler. Again, for bog. Uh, maybe another 25... But he's three from goals. South Australia as well. So True. Be, yeah. yeah. He's from South Definitely Australia. Definitely get an extra goal playing back home state. Yeah, so three goals. That's why going to kick six. <laughs> 25 <laughs> touches, 10 tackles, all the things. Uh, and I think we'll run away with it in the end. I reckon Crows will they'll give us a bit of a shock for three quarters. Might even be level at three-quarter time, but then I reckon we'll just steamroll last quarter. Five-goal yeah. win. Yeah, look, disagree. Um, I think that... Aren't you reversing? Well, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. I'll, do both. Um, go to the go to both extremes. I'll just do... What What do you reckon? Well, I think we're going to win comfortably. <laughs> yeah. He can't um, help himself. I just... Yeah, like just looking at the teams then. Just <laughs> Yeah, hearing some of those names. Jesus. I didn't even know. I, honestly, besides I think Butts. Yeah, that was five. That was probably the only person I yeah. recognized in those inns. Mm. We'll we'll googling some of them before, so yeah. um, we won't. We we'll continue to Google. I reckon there's about wait, who is Braden Cook? Yeah, can you reel off the other ones as well, just to kind of like Mitch Hinge? This? I know who he is. Hingey. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chase Jones. Oh yeah, yeah. of course, Jonesy. Uh, <laughs> Chris Burgess, Burjo, oh, the big, big fella from Gold Coast. No. Yeah, he used right? to play Gold Coast, didn't he? Pretty sure. Well, this conversation is saying a lot already. So, <laughs> wow. look, they're Ed fucked, McHenry. basically. And oh, yeah. Wait, he played against Frio Burgess. He's yeah. not in. No, he's in. But he was already playing. I'm just reading out other yeah, players. Yeah, he's so crap. Can you yeah. just, before I go on, just read out the midfield matchup? Okay. Yep. So, Dawson, Laird, Keys. Yep. Petrarca, Viney, Oliver. And then O'Brien and Max. Yep. And then what are the wings? So Caleb Hinge and Jones against Ed and Billings, but we know it's actually Caleb. this will be a laugh. Can you do the benches, <laughs> please? Burjo for them, Sam Berry, Matt Crouch, Luke Nankervis, Ned McHenry against Salem, Windsor, Sparrow, Chandler. Okay. Oh, I forgot about Salem as well. <laughs> yeah, he's <Jeez>. pretty good. <laughs> so we didn't even talk about him in the back line. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. And Wowie. Who's gonna be sub? Wowie? Go Wowie, Wowie again? He was yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, he was good. Yeah. He was good. Yeah. 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 Brownlow Medicine Sun is a sub. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm feeling cozy, best on ground, as I said earlier. Yeah. Five. Five plus. Um, Five plus. I think mm. he's going to set the tone. Like, I feel like he's going to mm. be up and First about clearance, early. Go in the middle. Pr- maybe start in the middle. Yeah. Um, I did like, I think, in round two when Clary started on the bench. Like, it was a bit weird. I feel like it rattled. It rattled them, so I wouldn't mind seeing a bit of that again. Maybe for like a couple of minutes, not too long. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be silly. Sam Barry won't know what to do. At the yeah. Side. Like, we haven't even spoken exactly about, right. We haven't even spoken about Clary tonight. Your favourite. Yeah. Well, we've got we've got next week as well, so we'll do True. a big segment on him after we win by <laughs> maybe. I'm feeling one forty. <laughs> it's oh, nice yeah. to see you oh. have a conservative approach this year. He's bad. Yeah, I really tried, but it was just hard. Like me and Marco were just eyeing each other off in those teams, <laughs> and I could just feel. I know. I like. I'm honest, and I'm still saying this. Like they're gonna come, but like, I'm sorry, mm. and like I hope this doesn't come back to bite us. But like, it could and it has. It yeah, I don't, and it it has and it will. Like, but. I don't know about this week, man. I think the worst thing that we've ever done, but it was the best thing we've ever done, is when we're in the smut den, and sorry, Derek, (laughs) and you and I and Nuggets 
went through the whole entire list at the time because we were nine and zero oh in twenty twenty two or ten and zero oh even. I think. Is this flag? And we went yeah. through every single player God, and we sat in there for about two hours and did like 10, 15 minutes or 10 minutes on every single player after we went 10 and 0. And that was the pot. And we didn't really speak about anything else. And ever since that point, it's been downhill. Yeah. Okay. So we, so we won't, do, we won't do that. There have been some ups. Well, if, if we gas this, straight to, um, straight to. this game, I'll change my, my tune and I'll stop doing my predictions which i believe and reel it back into like reel it back into 50 60 point wins 10 goals or something yeah yeah fair enough that's that's fine um we might leave it there if we want to no songs tonight no 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 No? okay no there's you know we did short shadows at the start that's okay that's cool i'm just excited about having adzi back um it's been great it's good it's been good to have you back man yeah it's great it's been be back next week as well where are you watching the game uh, I think I want to Mount Erica. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, there you go. if anyone wants to come and watch it with me, I'll be there by myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going to the Inkerman, which is where's that? East St Kilda. So very, Mount Erica, very D's. Well, actually, both pretty D's places. St Kilda. The Mount the Mount Eric is very uh, close to where I'm at the moment. Pop in. Well, it's a funny one. Do I do I go? Do I Tell oh, the boys to come to Mount Eric. I'm going to go there straight after work. So about 2 p.m. And then I'll... Uh, <laughs> just joking. Work. I'll be there at... 5, what is it? 5.30. 7.40? Yeah. It's a 7.40, yeah. Still a bit late for mine. I'd like it. Yeah. I'd like a 7 start. Yeah. Mount Erica. So That'd what be, is it over there? 7.20. So, yeah, seven, they're half an hour. Sorry, no, it should be 7.10. 7, yeah. <clears throat> oh, which, which changes, actually, this coming Sunday. Daylight savings is over. Right. Extra hour sleep. How does it change? We wind our clock back an hour. Oh, no, in terms of, but it's still, regardless, <laughs> well, it's, half an hour. It's still half an hour with Adelaide. Is they, it? They do is it down. always half an hour? Yeah. I think yeah. it changes with WA. Yeah, okay. So instead of a three-hour difference, it's two, because they don't do daylight saving. Yeah. We could be onto another pod here. Yeah. We could. Anyway, tune in <laughs> next week to daylight savings. <laughs> yeah. But focus <laughs> on Australian Eastern Standard Time. Were you yeah. teaching him daylight savings? I always yeah. forget how it works every time it comes around. Oh, it's uh, WA is the only state that doesn't do it because they're onto their own thing. Yeah. yeah, and you've got a lot of respect for WA. Uh, parts of it. No, it doesn't. Um, Queensland doesn't do it. Yeah. So yeah, wait, no. So they don't do it at all either. I don't think so. Interesting. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they don't. Because there's no time difference with us, Sydney. I don't think they ever do it. Yeah. Anyway, the the loyal listeners are <laughs> loving this. They've definitely <laughs> turned it off. <laughs> I hope you're not listening. It'd yeah. Be ridiculous. You should if you have were. stopped listening. Um, a very <laughs> leave there. Can't days. <laughs> Get it no done. Days. Four and one. Come on, gather. Give around. us four and one. What did I say? One forty. One forty. And then come in and just rip the heart out of Brisbane. We can rip the heart out. If yeah. we beat. If we win the next two, oh, it's so underrated flaggy. start. Like looking at that on paper. Sorry, I know we're finishing, but no, that's yeah, fine. two matches in Adelaide, five days apart. Adelaide Oval, Port are meant to be very good. Adelaide, everyone thought was going to be pretty good. Yeah, obviously, lost to the Swans wasn't ideal, but then to win those and then Port's obviously the big win there. Doggies, who knows what they're going to be like? But we mm. always seem to beat them. Mm. If we beat Brisbane and Adelaide, that is, we've got a, a better run in the second half of the year. Mm. That's an amazing start. It'd yeah. actually be ridiculous. What, five and one going into Richmond? Yeah. Six and, and just one. the fact that like <laughs> there's, you know, obviously Giants is the only team now where it's they haven't lost and they're looking sick. But There's two others. Or just three others. in terms of who haven't lost. Well, Carlton haven't lost. I don't, I don't whatever. I'm, I'm <laughs> not worried about Carlton at all. Freo as well. Freo, Freo, I'm like, not worried about Freo they're, they're, at all. They're so pretenderish. But they're, it's it's great to see Sydney lose. Like, I'm just like, yeah, okay, thank you. They're, they're, they're not like, they're not this invincible like nah. thing at the moment. Hmm. And no one ever is. It's such early days. There's such a long way to go, which is why I'm just like, can't wait to see Carlton drop and just crumble. Oh, you can feel the hate. They have the, <sighs> the worst record out of any team at Adelaide Oval as well. Average losing margin, 63 points. <clears throat> Who have they got today? Frio. Oh, God. That's a... I mean, I, I'll tip. I did tip, lose. They look pretty good. Yeah. Are you thinking Frio? 
in that tip. That's nah. a tip I can't figure nah, out. Nah, it's nah, still go the Blues. blues. I think the Blues are, look like a, the real thing this year. Freo, oh. I think the injuries to Cox and stuff will, will start to go wear Carlton. him down a bit. I'll go Carlton. I'll play it safe. I'm one behind the later. I'm trying to get tips, but I shouldn't think like that. It's too early. This week's pretty easy tipping. Except for Western Bulldogs, Geelong. That's tough. Yeah, I almost went dogs, but I've just... Ooh, I think who's gonna... co- is there anyone coming back for Geelong? I'm just feeling dogs. I don't know why. It's just... But is there anyone coming back for Geelong? Don't know. Couldn't Because if you. Danger and Guthrie No, are he's playing. not coming back, Danger. Guthrie? Don't know. Don't care about Geelong enough. No, I'm... I mean... Yeah, I don't know. Hate. Absolute hatred. Um, I think I'm going dogs. I think I'll go dogs and Carlton. That They're the two toughest games, I reckon. Is our game tough? Nah. No, nah, it's like 140, 150. Yeah, it's pretty easy. <laughs> All right, 140, 150. Let's get to four and one. Yeah. yeah. Let's get out of here. Thanks, right. mate.